Thank you for taking your time to join in this platform. We have actually dedicated one hour of our time today to uh, share with you um, these, uh, these facts about Skillman, what it is, what we do, what we have been implementing, and what we have achieved until now. Then uh, we will dedicate some, uh, let's say, we will take 20 minutes for this presentation with uh, Giovanni and Elena. And then after that, we have decided to spend the, the rest of this hour together to just networking and uh, to have networking activities so everybody can kind of engage practically and have further discussions for uh, synergies of cooperation. Having said that, I can start already. Oh, my God. I can start already sharing my screen, I guess, so, uh, showing you a first uh, video. Okay. If you want, uh, you can start uh, with your cons uh, initial considerations uh, as the leader of Skillman. I will uh, introduce participants to our principles and uh, our main uh, uh, relevant topics to understand uh, the vision of Skillman and what we could uh, propose in terms of partnership. But of course, then I will focus on something in particular that is the... Uh, method that we used to introduce the uh, systematic approach to excellence uh, in uh, math. And um, yes, thank you, Valentina. And then uh, uh, my colleague uh, um, Elena will be more precise about uh, the, the activities that we implement. Anyway, first uh, references to our history. We have uh, a vision for the future of Tibet. Uh, and uh, I have this uh, slide that uh, help us to understand that we are perfectly in line with the European uh, Union uh, um, thought and initiatives, because in the last declaration we have on uh, vocational education and training at European level, the Osnabrück declaration, there are the same uh, content and same uh, approach that uh, Schema Network promotes from its beginning that was 2014. So uh, the network uh, currently is uh, perfectly in line with what you can find in the European Commission webpage, where now on, uh, even uh, by the European Commission side and the European Union recognize that uh, the uh, TVET, the Vocation Education and Training for the European Definition, and the Technical Vocation Education and Training for all our uh, partners in the network uh, respond to the needs of not only to the needs of the economy but uh, also provides learners uh, with skills important for personal development and active uh, citizenship. This is very very important for us because all our efforts are based on this idea of equity and uh, uh, a fair society and so on. So the active citizenship is something that we promote and we also have a very strong commitment to um, have an approach to Tibet in terms of excellence for all and not excellence for elites. And this is a, a concept that uh, uh, brings us to uh, promote this year uh, an ethical impact campaign. So we are collecting uh, support from our organizations and individuals. And uh, we are in this regard uh, collecting uh, 
um, likes or <laughs> subscription, subscriptions of our uh, Skillman Ethical <coughs> Campaign 2021, sorry, uh, that is, as I was uh, telling before, in line with the European Skills Agenda and with other uh, official declarations. And uh, you can find also in our Skillman Florence Declaration that was uh, published in February last year, the ingredients of this ethical campaign that uh, match very well with the European uh, Union vision and the last European Commission strategy, even to recover from the COVID uh, period. How we think that it's possible to promote uh, an ethical approach, uh, an excellence for all, a uh, transition to digital and green economy. We think that this is possible uh, introducing uh, um, concrete uh, and uh, systematic approach to excellence in Tibet. This means that we look to boost excellence of Tibet, Tibet providers, universities, uh, vocational training schools, uh, and the, action, the actions uh, driven by the Chamber of Commerce and so on, and, and of course the public bodies, introducing a concept that uh, goes to evaluate the performances uh, against our principles. So we have uh, collected 25 uh, variables that are considered by our members the state of the art of the uh, excellence of the Tibet excellence, and we have uh, uh, organized these 25 variables in uh, a survey that allow the self-assessment of the organizations. The lines that you see in these pictures represent an example, and the red line is the performance of an individual COVE. For COVE, of course, we intend the centers of vocational excellence in a uh, broad concept, not an individual body, but uh, a connect a connected uh, network of organizations at, uh, uh, at local level, at territorial level, that uh, represent, that can boost the excellence of Tibet, uh, represent the starting point to have uh, uh, Tibet accessible for all, an equity approach, and so on. So I think I have uh, ended my presentation. Valentina, I give back uh, the floor to you. And uh, if you want, I can continue to share the my. Well, my screen, actually, I'll fix my problem. So, uh, I was saying that I fixed my my problem. So, if you don't mind, I would like to just go over with uh, take over with that. All right. Let's go. Okay. Let's. Go. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it's my it's my time now. I'll be very very brief uh, because I want to uh, I don't want to waste any time for our um, for our discussions later and for our interaction later. Uh, my name is Valentina. I am project manager uh, project manager of Skillman, but my work is very focused on uh, communication activities and promotion activities. Um, here, um, I would like to just give a very quick in, um, overview of the network, which is uh, which brings together a worldwide community, actually. And we're talking about a big group of stakeholders, uh, mainly TVET providers, universities, industries, individuals, policymakers. So we can say that Skillman is actually a network of networks. And in, in a way, it's the main place around which we engage in the development and in the exchange of skills. Um, here you can see a little bit of the geographical coverage of uh, the network, so where our members come from. Uh, the network was created in 2014. In the beginning, it was focused only in the advanced manufacturing sector. And uh, with time, it actually broadened up a lot. It expanded, and right now, uh, it's also it also covers other se other sectors as well. Uh, so through the network, we introduce and exchange skills uh, mainly to help stakeholders to cope uh, with the new challenges and needs of these ever in, uh, ever changing society and labor market. Uh, so, for example, we provide industry leaders with uh, innovative curricula. We facilitate cross networking activities uh, for our international experts. Um, now, uh, I want to show you um, a, very, a very straightforward picture 
uh, which is the highlights that we have achieved, uh, that we have been achieving so far. So as you see, we are very proud to have uh, more than 600 members in our network in more than 300 regions and in 93 countries. Uh, we have 50 plus ambassadors that spread around the values and the principles of the network coming from different backgrounds, of course. And we're very proud to have established four peer learning clubs. Uh, those clubs that Elena will uh, talk more in detail later uh, are just groups of experts that gather together and discuss around four uh, main TVET related um, topics. Uh, now, with them, we have published position papers um, uh, that are, again, that Elena will uh, illustrate uh, a little bit uh, in just a minute with you. Uh, all I want to say is that um, we have been organizing a series of activities where we en actually engage our stakeholders. So when we look at the motivations for the stakeholders to join the Skinman Network, the biggest motivation of all is that they have a un unique occasion not to just network around and to establish partnerships for future European projects, but to actively contribute to the sector, which is exactly our strong point. Uh, now, you see elements on, these, uh, on this slide. I, would, I don't want to go too much in detail with that. I just want to mention that our biggest annual event is the Skillman International Forum. Last year, we hosted it online in December and we had 470 delegates coming from all over the world and during this two-day conference uh, we had the, the, the chance and the opportunity to have a different perspective from, uh, from professional speakers and uh, um, let's say engaging activities from uh, people from all over the world so it was a very successful event this year we plan to organize the same event in the second half of the year and we are already working on that Moving on, uh, these activities are actually embedded in, in, a, in a project, the SkinNet project, co-founded by the European Commission. And uh, in, our, um, in our work, we cooperate with a series of uh, international organizations. You see them all here, the European Network of Innovation for Inclusion, IVETA, the International Vocational Education and Training Association, uh, EAPRIL, uh, then the Assembly of European Regions, and we have a special partnership with the European Training Foundation. <clears throat> now, our main objective is to create and to implement um, a large network of um, uh, centers of vocational excellence, as Giovanni was mentioning. I was just to add on this that we have established the Skillman Global Covers Initiative, uh, Centers of Vocational Excellence Initiative. Uh, that is a transnational mo model that is was joined by the Italian Ministry of Education, the Austrian Federal Ministry of Digital and Economic Affairs, and also was supported by the regional authorities and governments. Now we uh, it includes four covers, uh, sorry, eight covers uh, that are distributed in uh, six countries of and seven regions, both, uh, let's say, in South, uh, Central and Northern European regions. And now this model includes uh, 36 full partners that we have so far and 96 associated partners. So this initiative is integrated in our strategy uh, to promote this model through sustainability and ethical values globally uh, across countries. I will just stop here and give uh, the, the floor to Elena so she can explain better um, and more in detail uh, some of our uh, activities. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Valentina. No if problem. I may, I would like to have your support in scrolling in the slides. No problem. So, um, I'm going to present one of our pro prior initiatives, that is the so-called Peer Learning Labs, mentioned by my colleague Valentina uh, two minutes ago. So, uh, first of all, what uh, are they? PLCs means Peer Learning Labs, that are stable, uh, multi-stakeholder table or focus group for discussion and brainstorming yeah. and also uh, design and development of, of joint uh, initiatives uh, in order to contribute to, to the general process of innovation of the TVET and innovation of TVET systems at local and we can say local level according to the main objectives and finalities of our Skillman network. Um, at the moment, we have activated online four PLCs, 
uh, well, they are thematic focus groups. So the first one, as we can see here, is dedicated to <clears throat> the uh, innovation in advanced manufacturing sectors, so a sectoral approach the process of uh, uh, open innovation. The second of PLC is dedicated to advocacy and policy influencing. That means stakeholders' engagement for policy influencing and policy innovation, supporting the innovation, for example, uh, at the Tibet system level of curricula, closing, strengthening the business, building, the business education partnership, sorry, and also the cooperation among all key actors at ecosystem level. The third PLC is focused on VBL practices and methodologies and approaches, and also specifically on what is changing at VBL level, considering the impact of pervasive digitalization of tools and practices in themselves, and also considering the impact of the COVID pandemic we are still facing. The last one is dedicated to the train the trainers. So we are discussing and exploring how facing together a problem and the main challenge of upskilling and reskilling of trainers, educators and teachers in order to increase the general responsiveness of schools, vet providers, educational providers in general, and the process of innovation of the Tibet system uh, themselves, as I said before. At the moment, we have engaged uh, uh, over than 200 experts, and they are bad professionals, uh, stakeholders, public and private, uh, policymakers, local, especially policymakers, but also national and international. We have also researchers, um, uh, with the great expertise in the fields of education, pedagogical approaches, digital transformation of learning, etc. And we are meeting online periodically uh, through a common environment, discussion environment that is live streamed. For example, through online meeting like this one we, we are having together, or also, um, and also a work. Um, I shared the workstation, shared workspace through the management tool that is called Basecamp. We will see it in detail later on. First of all, what is uh, our approach? So uh, through the PLCs, uh, we, uh, um, we have adopted a participatory approach to innovation. That means following these four steps here, we can see in the slides. First of all, we discuss, we brainstorm together in order to identify and prioritize problems and prior challenges related to the, the, the general main concept of innovation at Tibet level. Then after these initial um, analysis, we can say, we define together a list of concrete actions or joint initiatives to, to be developed that can contribute to that innovation processes. That means, for example, innovate, joint project, projects, joint events, joint awareness campaigns, as uh, mentioned by Giovanni at the beginning, for example, under these PLCs, we have developed the, ethic, the Skillman Ethical Campaign. Then, after this planning, this co-design, we will take concretely action. So that means that means that each uh, uh, members of these PLCs at context level and within uh, his or her networks will promote these PLCs, their approach, and also their deliverables, outcomes, and outputs. Finally, we have the first step. That means to evaluating together our results and outcomes. So up to now, thank you, Valentina. Next step, please. Up to now, we have used, we have been using this shared workspace for any kind of discussion, hints, or knowledge sharing. That is, as I said before, Basecamp, very user-friendly managing tool that can easily be assessed. And this is more or less how this uh, common space looks like. So we have different rooms 
for example, for uh, the assignment of a specific tasks and to-dos, for scheduling activities, meetings, appointments of relevant external events can, can, can contribute to our discussion them itself. Then we have a chat for instant messaging, uh, a repository room, that means uh, to be able to upload any relevant source, uh, source or documents we found online or through our networks that can support our discussion and reflection. And then last but not least, a room dedicated, uh, dedicated uh, on the, uh, to the um, cooperative work uh, in the strictly sense of the term. So in this PLC review room, we start to cooperate to uh, put into, into the ground what uh, we have shared as hints or uh, what are the results of our common reflection. Uh, this is the generative room, we can say. So you can assess very easily to these PLCs if you are interested in cooperating and discussing together with us. Uh, next slide, please, Valentina. And here you can say the links to be assessed for subscription. So really a very easy procedure and a very user-friendly uh, shared working space. So please, if you are interested, Let's join to our PLCs. Up to now, we have, uh, besides the general cooperating uh, activity I've mentioned, we have uh, realized together number four policy position paper, we can say, or, or policy briefs that are focused one for each PLC on the prior challenges we have uh, defined together in order to think about innovation perspective, uh, innovation potential to uh, transform the TVET uh, systems and the TVET supply chain. Regarding the first PLCs, if you remember, we can uh, focus this first PLC on advanced manufacturing sectoral dimension. So the prior challenges are tied up to There is some problem of connection. I see, I see several friends that are connected online. Elena, probably you have some connection problem. For the first, as regarding the second, yeah. regarding the second PLC, advocacy and policy influencing. The main focus of our discussion related to this policy paper is how to engage stakeholders in order to cooperate together at ecosystem level. Uh, so, and how we can cooperate according to that participatory approach to co-design policies and measures that can help the, uh, we can say the increase of the responsiveness of the TVET system. <clears throat> Also thinking about how to reskill and empower the TVET professionals, first of all. Um, regarding the PLC3 uh, VBL changes, we are discussing on how digitalization can open new frontiers in work-based learning, for example, one of our a uh, major topic is related to immersive learning thanks to the application of advanced uh, reality or immersive reality systems and also the so-called virtual mobility. So how digital tools can help virtual ex exchanges and vi virtual internship at, uh, at international level. Uh, regarding the fourth PLC, train the trainers, as I said before, the prior focus is uh, how to innovate the training opportunities for upskilling and reskilling of trainers, 
teachers and educators and how to support their, their empowerment and their motivation to continuous professional development. This is a key issue for innovation of, uh, of the entire Tibet system and also for effective learning uh, environments. So now we have uh, published recently these four uh, position paper on our main website. There is, a, there is a, an online consultation. So you are kindly invited to join this online consultation. You can uh, have a look at this position paper. In them themselves. Last slide, I think, Valentina. So, um, no other words from my side. I uh, asked Valentina to introduce the Skillman International Forum of for the 2021 for, for this that is coming that is coming soon thank you very much thank you Elena I think we got a little bit longer than expected uh, so I would suggest uh, to thank you all very much we will uh, be in touch uh, of course after this webinar um, at our booth we will uh, share all our material uh, so um, you'll be able to access all the presentations and everything. Right now, I think Giovanni can assist us uh, with technical uh, instructions on how to be redirected to the, let's say, discussion rooms so we can actually interact with the audience. Is that correct, Giovanni? I think now we can go back to the tables. We have uh, several participants that I see here connected, but they could fit if they are interested to make a, a deep uh, uh, discussion on the individual uh, topics that we have uh, introduced uh, on the three tables. So we will stop the live, uh, uh, live uh, program that we are now at 29 minutes, so we overpass the expected time. And then we will be uh, moved directly to the uh, lounge room. In the lounge room, we have uh, three tables, and each table can host uh, maximum uh, eight uh, participants. I don't see here any raised hand, but uh, of course, if there is someone that would like to say something, this is the moment to raise your hand and then we can invite on the stage. Otherwise, we close here. I would like to thank you very much, all these uh, friends and participants and colleagues. I have seen connections from different, uh, uh, very far countries uh, and uh, different uh, uh, world times. And uh, this thanks because we are in the middle <laughs> and we can host from the Americas to the Asian countries. So I, would question, I don't know if you see it in the chat. We have a question. Uh, okay. Do you want to answer now? Okay, there is a, a tool in the right bar. You can raise your hand if you want to uh, um, have the floor and we can invite it to the to the floor, the ones that... Uh, uh, anyway, yes, please, uh, Valentina, introduce the, the chat question and then we can... All right, so the question says, thank you for the presentations. Can you already share examples about what are the new VET curricula that needs to be developed to meet the new and future needs? Yes, we have no time now, but uh, we have uh, this uh, curricula that are free of access uh, and are published online in our in this in our website. And then um, we can share directly with the interested participants uh, the access with the links. Uh, and then we have, uh, um, I take your your side, Valentina. We have. Uh, um desk service that we offer to all uh, to all uh, interested organizations i would uh, remember that this service is not uh, 
um, offered uh, by the schematic secretariat, secretariat only, but uh, is uh, done in collaboration with our sister organizations that uh, joined the Schiman Alliance, that in particular the Assembly of European Regions, IVETA, EAPRIL, and uh, the uh, Association um, for Inclusion and uh, um, Innovation for Inclusion, the European Networks for Innovation and Innovation. And of course, we have a strong collaboration uh, because of our memorandum of understanding signed in 2020 with the European Training Foundation. So all these uh, uh, curricula are provided uh, by all, all the services, the desk services to support the use of curricula and the unit of learnings that we have delivered by, by this consortium of organizations. Okay, if there are no uh, other uh, chat interactions and uh, raised hands, I see here requests to get in contact directly. Of course, uh, there we will do it. Thank you very much. We would propose now to close this uh, live session and to go back to the tables. In, in the tables, in small groups, we will be able to go deep into each argument. Thank you very much to everybody for participating in the live session. Now we close this and we'll jump back to the tables, to the lounge room. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Well,